Greetings, vinyl community. I hope everyone out there is doing well. Um, I want to talk about something really quickly before we get to the vinyl finds and um, whatever else happens in these videos. Um, as I film this, it's the day after uh, Rick Ocasek died from the cars. And I'm not one to eulogize people, or for lack of a better term, eulogize people on my videos. Um, but Rick Ocasek and the Cars specifically um, have been one of my favorite bands since I was very, very young. And I thought it was worth addressing, at least mentioning. I would, uh, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't say something because the Cars and Rick Ocasek has been such a big part of my life. Uh, musically speaking, anyways. Um, so yeah, so this is Monday, and kind of news broke yesterday late afternoon that he had passed away at 75, um, which surprised me that he was that old. I know he was older when they when the cars kind of made it big, um, but uh, like I said, I normally don't eulogize people, but this one really kind of I think this and David Bowie were the only two times that I, I, I ever made a conscious decision um, to play their music after I, I had found out that they had passed away. Um, I know, you know, if you look on Instagram and Twitter and, uh, and vinyl communities on Facebook, um, the minute someone dies, people are always posting their records or listening to their records, which is almost kind of like the expected thing nowadays. And I'm not criticizing anyone. That's just kind of what people do nowadays. Um, whether it be you know them expressing their grief or paying tribute or or uh, just doing what's expected, I guess. But um, uh, to my knowledge, I think that was the only the second time I actually did that, and I stayed up very, very, very late playing the catalog of um, the Cars and Rick Ocasek's solo material. And before I go any further, cheers, everyone. Um, yeah, so this one really was a real. Big, uh, big bummer for me personally, and uh, like I said, I would, it wasn't just vinyl. Uh, I like this is the, you know when I say I'm a Cars fan and a Rico Casey fan, I mean I'm a massive fan. If you follow me on Instagram, and I'm not sure why you aren't, come on already at n a z z underscore nomad. Um, you'll know what I was posting a lot of their promo singles and this all things from my collection that I was playing last night and Rick's solo material like this awesome album he did called Troubleizing um, that was produced by Billy Corrigan and Melissa Oftamar was, is plays bass and Brian Baker from Minor Threat and Bad Religion plays guitar amongst others um, you know to his uh, the, I think the last solo album he ever did was one called Next Today and this is the Japanese import version and then I even have a promo advanced copy of that album, the North American copy of that album, you get my drift. Right down to his um, very sought after, very rare album called Negative Theater. And all his other solo albums. So um, I'm not here to play show and tell with the, my Cars stuff, but um, uh, like I said, I would feel remiss if I didn't at least mention it. And uh, because I always like to kind of give a little slice of life between you and I, because I'm no different than you. Um, I just wanted to express, uh, um, I guess, my gratitude that we had, we had, we had a lot of years of Cars and uh, Rick Ocasek music to uh, to listen to. And um, there we go. So, anyways, um, yeah, just that. This really. Uh, uh, it's not even 24 hours ago that I found out, so it's just kind of really, not to be melodramatic about it, but it, you know, this is one of those ones um, that really hurts, and um, and uh, it's kind of a, a a further realization that that God damn, I'm getting old, and all my heroes are dying. So um, to Rick Ocasek and fellow Cars fans out there, it cheers to you. All right, with that out of the way. I hope everyone watched that and didn't fast forward that. You, pro you probably did. Uh, bastards. Anyways, um, yeah. So um, we're going to get to the vinyl finds right away. I have a couple um, non-vinyl finds to show you really quickly. Is uh, a track. I still found the odd a track that's interesting. I found a quadraphonic four-channel mix of Beck, Bogart, Napasee. 
Great album. This is the second Quadraphonic one I found. I have a copy of Black Sabbath's um, either Masters of Reality or Paranoid on Quadraphonic. I think it's Paranoid I have on each track. So I always pick these up, the Quadraphonic ones. There's always people who um, who are collecting eight tracks nowadays. Um, anyways, just some, uh, cassettes, some cassettes from thrift stores that I found. Um, Rush, Carous of Steel. I think this is an original uh, co cassette copy. Actually, now that I look at this. Carous of Steel, very underrated album. Very, it's a very hard album to get it. I would not say that would be the first Rush album you ever listened to, but very underrated album. Uh, Dio, The Last in Line. Uh, some ACDC, Razor's Edge, Dirty Deeds, uh, Who Made Who, oh, there's more here, uh, Highway to Hell, as I'm dropping shit left and right, um, Live, then I found a copy of uh, The Doors' L.A. Woman, and of course, uh, well, it's not of course, because it's The Full Horseman, um, their first album, no, uh, nobody said it was easy. On cassette. There you go. So that's what I have for non-vinyl finds for you. Um, one quick more. Cheers, to everyone. All right, vinyl finds. Oh, by the way, stay tuned uh, to the end. I think I have a, a helpful uh, turntable uh, tip for everyone. So stay tuned to the end, if if you so choose. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not begging you to. I'm just. You know, be nice if you did. Um, just quickly, new vinyl. Uh, this. Uh, this came out for record store day a while, not a while ago, it was a year ago now. And I just put off buying it and put off buying it. And I think it came out commercially as well now. And, um, a local record shop put it on sale. It was on for really cheap, but, um, I finally had to bite on it was, um, uh, Neil Young live at the Roxy tonight's the night. Um, it's good. I think I need another go around of it, um, to, to listen to, you well, know, just to get into it again. Um, it's a very, Tonight's the Night is a very dense album to get into. And um, live, it's, it's, it, it is equally as dense. It's a, there's a lot of things to, to latch on to or, or to try to, um, to understand within what he's talking about. Um, if you um, read about the album Tonight's the Night, you'll know what I'm talking about. So there you go. Anyways, uh, Live at the Roxy uh, was something new I picked up. Um, these came in the mail via, and I'm brain farting. Please remind me who told me. God damn. See, this is getting old now. Um, I had a nice conversation with someone now. I want to say Ron. I could be wrong. Um, who alerted me to a website called deepdiscounts.com, and they were having a massive vinyl sale. Um, and the reason why he told me is there was some golden earring vinyl. And I had a, de uh, a deeper look at all the things they were blowing out. Go, uh, try that website, deepdiscounts.com. You can get some pretty damn good deals. Um, so I got this. Uh, one of the gold, few golden earring albums I didn't have is uh, Millbrook USA. This is a limited edition of 1500 on blue vinyl. And my number is 521. It was uh, Millbrook USA. Um, I don't think what year this was. 2003, 2005 around there. Um, obviously, this is referencing where they record the album. They record the album in Millbrook, which I think is in uh, New York State, I believe. Anyways, um, not their best album, not their worst album. It's kind of floating. It's like everything they've released kind of in the last, let's say, 15 years or so. It's, um, you know, some some are good, some are eh, some, some are in the middle. Millbrook USA kind of floats in the middle there, but I, I just didn't have it. And... I got it for like seven bucks, whatever it was, um, plus sh plus shipping. So, anyways, Millbrook USA. This is on the Music on Vinyl label, so it sounds amazing. So, I think I need to listen to it more, like the Neil Young, but for different reasons. Um, I, I I didn't like it when I first got the album on CD years ago, and um, I think I need another couple go rounds of it to, to see if it's grown on me. And then with that. This was a whopping 10 bucks on that website, deepdiscounts.com. Um, the Cure, Torn Apart. This is the sequel to their Mixed Up remix album, which is awesome, by the way. And uh, this is a double vinyl. This came out for Record Store Day, but I think it came out via Picture Disc, um, which is weird because The Cure have been doing 
Record Store Day releases on picture disc. And then they released the, the regular black vinyl a little bit later. I'm not falling for those picture discs no more, Cure. Because I'd rather have the black vinyl than picture discs. There's, eh, you know, they're better sounding nowadays, but still, nothing beats just plain black vinyl. Anyways, uh, remix album. It's called, uh, it's kind of like a sequel to Mixed Up. Um, uh, it's kind of like, I think, I'm, I'm not sure the history of it. If there was stuff that they did and they didn't put on Mixed Up or there were newer releases uh, remixed anyways. But um, good album. Not, not as good as Mixed Up was, but um, for 10 bucks, I mean, come on. And I didn't have it. So The Cure Torn Apart, uh, Mixed Up, Extras, 2018. Actually, it's actually... Um, it says all the remixes were done by Robert Smith. That surprises me. I did not know that. I'm le we're learning together. Anyways, the cure um, torn apart. Yeah, good good website. I think I paid uh, with shipping. Um, shipping to Canada is obviously a little bit more expensive, but I think for those two, paid I don't know thirty five bucks, and that would have been the cost of one of those albums. So I got a kind of two for one deal, more, more or less. Anyways, so yeah. Good deal on that one. So let's get to the used vinyl that I found. Most of this is thrift store finds. Um, but this one was not. This was uh, via a kind of regular used record store uh, locally. A uh, store called Listen Records in town. And um, I found an original UK pressing of Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction. With the band cover. This is going to be my screen cap because people will click on it if they see this cover, right? Anyways, uh, lo and behold, I go into that record store one day with my wife. We were just out uh, strolling that, the street that it's on, um, stop for coffee or whatever we did. And, of course, she knows I'm going to go into a record store. And this was sitting in a bin of uh, new records they had just got in. They had bought from someone, and they had an original UK copy, and it wasn't even a lot of money. So I've been wanting one of these forever and a day, and now I have one. So, the Guns N' Roses uh, original pressing, UK pressing of Appetite for Destruction. Um, let's see what else I got for you. I'm, not, I'm trying not to make this one too terribly long today. Um, I think the rest of these I'm going to show you now, unless I put these all, all out of order, or all thrift store finds. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Why not? It was there. Um, primarily, I bought it because it had all the inserts in it. I like to keep the inserts. So when I find um, really good copies with no inserts, I kind of, you know, piece it. I, I, I make Franken albums, as I call them. Um, so anyways, and that's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coin that phrase, or I'm going to patent that phrase. Franken album. It's the art of piecing albums together with inserts. So anyways, got a copy. Vinyl, the vinyl is fine. It's nothing to, to, to write home about, but like I said, it had all the inserts in it, which I'll be keeping, and plus there was a buck ninety-nine. Um... I'm going to save these because some people do like 12 inch singles and I'll save them to the end. A uh, copy of the Dream Police or Dream Police by Cheap Trick. Nothing fancy here, just a really nice clean copy. And when I was young, that was my dream guitar. The Checkerboard Explorer. I, I still want one. Or, uh, well, I mean, he has a lot of guitars, Rick Nielsen, that I would love to have. But that was the guitar I dreamt about when I was young. One day... One day when the kids are all moved out and, I'm, and I have and I have disposable income, I'll get myself a checkerboard explorer, and then I can play really bad guitar covers for you all instead of showing you vinyl. Um, just some bog standard finds here. Oh yeah, no, you know this is not bog standard. This was at a uh, local Goodwill. Um, Dixie Chicks Home, sealed. And I thought, okay, well, I don't know. It's one of those new records someone bought, didn't open. But it's an original pressing. On um, you can tell by you can tell by the hub, by the hype sticker. Well, and the barcode and Discogs kind of helps me out as well. But uh, an original pressing, which is a lot of money on Discogs, sealed, no less, of Dixie Chicks Home. Uh, of course, this one has long time gone and landslide, which the sticker tells you. I'm kind of torn whether to open this or not. Because it's one of those things where I could get a brand new pressing of it for, you know, 25, 30 bucks. And, uh, and maybe flip this one. I'm not sure what to do with this one. But, like I said, this was one of my best finds I've had um, last week. It was an original pressing on uh, Sony Columbia. 
uh, of the Dixie Chicks home. Uh, let's see. The Rhythmics, um, Sweet Dreams. I needed an upgrade copy. There I have it. Another copy, I think this is my third copy I found recently. I, I remember a couple of videos ago, I found a sealed uh, a sealed original pressing, but I found a really nice copy uh, of Madonna's Like a Prayer. Another copy of that. Uh, Ted Nugent's Weekend Warriors. I know a lot of people don't like Ted Nugent, and um, yeah, it's probably best you don't talk about old, old Ted nowadays, but you know what? His music lives on, despite what you think of him personally. Weekend Warriors by Ted Nugent. I didn't have that one. Really weird uh, kind of funk R&B album I found. And I just bought it on Pure Hunch. It's something called Wilmer and the Dukes. Uh, kind of a rare album on Aphrodisiac Records. 1968, 69, around that area. Um, and I did some research on Wilmer and the Dukes. And they were from Buffalo, New York. Um, gained some popularity in that area. And then kind of in the... Uh, Eastern uh, Eastern Canada, the, in Toronto area, that they, they did fairly well. But this is their one and only album they ever did, um, was just called Wilmer and the Dukes. And it is a pretty good funk soul album, I will, I, I will tell you that. So that was one of those hunches that paid off. Uh, I really like the album Wilmer and the Dukes. Um, I think, I, you know, in one of my very, very, very early videos, I showed this album. And you don't find, you don't come across it very often, but it's, and I'll, I'm going to just hang on. When I show it to you, you might want to you might, you might fast forward, but hang on. It's Buffy St. Marie uh, and her album called Illuminations. This is an original Vanguard Records pressing. Um, normally, I mean, Buffy St. Marie is kind of royalty in Canada. Uh, but normally you would associate um, Buffy St. Marie with singer, songwriter, folk music. This album... I'm telling you, is absolutely fantastic. It um, it has elements of that, but she kind of did really weird experiments with early synthesizers on this album. So there's a little bit of a progressive sound to it. Um, there is uh, there's psychedelic moments on it, uh, and it's an album really that you you, you need to at least listen to um, if you think Buffy St. Marie is this boring kind of. Um, singer songwriter folk artist i would never listen to her those kind of albums but this one particularly is absolutely fantastic it's the second time i found this one in my life and i think i i'm not sure if i have the other one still but upgrade copy regardless it's absolutely clean as, as a whistle great album buffy saint marie uh, illuminations this is from probably i think the late 60s is when this one's from i'm reading on the back and it doesn't say so anyways there you go um yet another <laughs> You have to excuse me here. I have to laugh every time I show this because if I go if I go back through my videos, this is probably one of those albums I have, I have found the most is uh, Fluid Mac Rumors. <coughs> you have to excuse me. Sorry, we're doing one take today. I'm still recovering from my illness that I talked about last video. It's the it's it's the throat chest infection that won't go away. I'm feeling better. I, I'm happier though. Can't you tell? Because I found another copy of Rumors. I think if I counted um, between copies I own of diff different variants and then copies I've set aside for kind of uh, trading, selling, I don't know, 12 copies easily. Another copy of Rumors, why not? Um, I'm trying to make this a little bit quick here. Elvis Costello, Trust. I don't know. I may or may not have. I, I know I've had his album on CD before. Um, but I don't know if I've, ever, if I've ever had this album and kept it on vinyl. Um, trust, a lot of people love this album. It's okay. Uh, Club Lands on it. It's a good song. But, uh, I don't know. This is kind of, for me, what the period where he kind of start, he started slowly declining, then he kind of made another rise again. But, uh, uh, I'll, I'll keep, this is a copy I will keep of. I love the cover, though. Elvis Costello's Trust. Um, another copy of uh, Eat to the Beat by Blondie. I've talked about this before with Cars albums and with Blondie albums and and bands like that. I just, I buy them, I go to record fairs, and they sell. They sell. The kids love the Blondie. It's amazing. So whenever I pick up nice, clean copies or I find nice, clean copies of Blondie albums, I buy them. Plus, I love this album too, personally. Eat to the Beat. 
A uh, copy of Rolling Stones, Emotional Rescue, nothing to write home about. Nice copy. Um, just, I, you, just see, you see this album around a lot, but I actually like this album, Emotional Rescue. Okay, don't laugh at this one. Okay, I'm going to take a drink of coffee first because, oh, we're back to coffee, by the way. Cheers. You're going to laugh, but I picked it up because it's one of those rare thrift store, store, uh, thrift store finds and it's a quadraphonic album. And I'm a sucker for quad albums. Um, plus, they uh, they they, t they tend to go for a bit of money. It's the Carpenters, Quadraphonic. Why not? There are people out there who love the Carpenters. They're, they've reissued their albums on vinyl, and they sell. People, I, I don't know. But it's a Quadraphonic one, see? And it's actually, it says, this album has been SQ encoded. If you can see that in the bottom there. So yeah, I, I may or may not listen to it. Who knows? Um, I do have a quad amp I can break out uh, when I get these albums and I listen to them. But anyways, uh, the Carpenters Quadraphonic. Um, they, oh, by the way, this is their the, their greatest hits, the single '69 to '73. Maybe it's good. I don't know. A uh, copy of George Benson's uh, Space. Fine album. I think this is a uh, second copy I found this one uh, uh, lately of uh, Manfred Mann's The Good Earth. Good album. If you're looking to dip the toe into a Manford man, this is uh, not a bad choice for um, for their kind of mid-70s material. One for the Canadians. Kim Mitchell's first EP. Uh, he, um, ex of Max Webster. And that's a whole other story. Max Webster is, uh, um, you can't turn the radio on, on classic rock without hearing Max Webster. But this is his first EP he ever did. Um, this is the album... Uh, EP before Kimo Alongo, if, if that's how you pronounce it, the one with Go For A Soda. I think that song was kind of big in the States. It was Kim Mitchell's uh, first EP. This is, uh, you know what, this is going to be a keeper because it's an original choral records pressing of Buddy Holly's greatest hits. Usually when I find this one, it's on a later MCA pressing, but this is an original choral, choral records pressing from the U.S., and really clean as well. So this is going to be my keeper copy. The all-time best Buddy Holly greatest hits album for me is... Uh, um, Buddy Holly Lives with the brick wall uh, and it says Buddy Holly Lives or whatever. That's the one I grew up on. That's the one my dad had and I would steal that one and when I was very very young I'd play it and think Buddy Holly was some new guy and I'd you know rock along with that'll be the day you know all that stuff. I did that with, I did that with Beach, uh, the Beach Boys Endless Summer as well. Um, but the, to me, that's the ultimate Buddy Holly greatest hits. But I'll keep this one as well, because it's an original core record is pressing in. And I do like myself some Buddy Holly. Oh, and we're back to this guy again. Uh, Cat Scratch Fever. Uh, like I said, the, the less you talk about Ted, the better. But um, the music... The music's fine. It's Ted Nugent. Um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, I don't think I've shown these at all. I'm trying to th yeah, no, these are all brand new finds, sorry. Uh, uh, last last video, I, I found a copy of the Ohio Players Fire, I believe it was, and I found another Ohio Players album uh, a couple days ago, one called Contradiction, and I don't want to unfold the cover there, but it's a lady and a horse, and you flip it over, and it's more more of the lady with the horse, but Ohio Players always have really nice covers. I like me some my Ohio Players, so that's going to be a keeper for me. I found an In the Shrink with the hype sticker copy of Boomtown Rats, The Fine Art of Surfacing. I like Boomtown Rats, uh, not all of them, but I do like them in general. I know in the UK, this might, I think there's a, a when I talk to people who are English, um, they were kind of almost like a joke band. They were kind of thought of as a um, Johnny Come Lately to the punk scene. And they were always on top of the pops and they got a lot of stick for that. But uh, um, I think if you kind of, if, if, you don't, if you're not from the UK and you don't know you know, the back history of the Boomtown Rats, and you can listen to them without that kind of bias. The Boomtown Rats are actually a really great band, They're, despite what you may think of Bob Geldof. I think he's fine. He did Live Aid, for God's sakes. Come on, Band-Aid. Anyways, the fine art of surfacing. Uh, this is the one with I Don't Like Mondays on. Uh, another copy of uh, I Buy These. Um, what was I talking about earlier? Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I buy this, and I, uh, I, I make... Franken albums out of them and I make perfect copies for people is the Beach Boys Endless Summer that I just talked about five seconds ago if you were paying attention. Anyways, uh, 
I found, uh, I think about a couple months ago on one of my videos, I showed you, uh, I found an excellent condition copy that's in my collection, that's my keeper copy. Um, this one is a nice copy, it doesn't have the poster in it, so I buy them, and then I kind of piece together the posters inside and everything gets together, but in my opinion, maybe one of the top five greatest hits albums of all time is Endless Summer. I used to listen to this and that Buddy Holly Lives album when I was a kid, endlessly, because that's probably all my dad had. Oh, he had a copy of Rolling Stones Black and Blue. Why? I don't know. But uh, Adam Ant, friend or foe. Uh, this one has Goody Two Shoes on it. Um, this guy gets so much love in the DJ world. Uh, his albums are very, very sought after. And this is only the second time I've found one of his albums at a thrift store. There's a guy named Idris Muhammad, Boogie to the Top. He's a drummer, but uh, a lot of people seek his albums because uh, whether he's the... Um, flavor of the day of people to, to go back and discover i don't know his albums are awesome by the way but uh whenever you find an idris muhammad album you know someone's gonna the minute you show it locally someone's gonna be texting you or asking you to, if they could buy it but this one's called uh boogie to the top idris muhammad and what are we doing here 26 minutes not bad some 12 inch singles you know what a lot of people ask me to show them uh, I went to a DJ's uh, a sale yesterday um, that was held by uh, some folks in town. I'll talk about next video. And uh, it was um, one of the one of maybe the second or third time I went to a sale like this where it was nothing but twelve inch singles, nothing. There was thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Um, I bought some. And I'll show you next video. Uh, like I said, I don't I don't really show twelve inch singles even though I have. A collection probably of I don't know five thousand or more in that room over there, but I got a copy of Pet Shop Boy. This is not from yesterday. This is from thrift stores uh, of recent. Um, Pet Shop Boys uh, left to my own devices, but this is in that envelope sleeve which I've never seen before. Um, I have I think I have that version, but I just don't have the version with the envelope. So there you go. I can't believe I didn't own this one. I own every other single by these guys, but you think I have a promo, actually, you know, I have an A&M promo 12 inch of this, but I've never had just a regular version of Love Song by Simple Minds. And what else? You know what? We're going to end that. We're going we're gonna to end the vinyl finds with that. Um, yeah. Um, what I want, I think I wanted to talk about something about turntables, yes. So, uh, Really quick, I, I want to thank everyone who watched my last video um, showing those really nice sleeves from Vinyl uh, Storage Solutions. Um, the, the website reached out to me after I told them about the video and they were very grateful and, and they really liked the video, so thank you to, to you all there. And then um, I was talking about uh, stylus, uh, stylus gauges, tracking force gauges, that's, that's the term. Anyways, and a lot of people like that, sorry, and um, I really appreciate the people who sent me messages and, and thanked them. For, and they were thanking me for their recommendations and um, for the recommendation anyways and telling me that, you know, they were, they ordered one and they picked one up and, and it really came in handy. So I'm, I'm happy that I did something that was of service to some people anyway. So thank you for watching that video. Uh, I want to do a, vi a really quick um, a tip for turntables. This is mostly for new, for new people. Um, you have a, this is a head shell off my turntable, off my Moran 6200, 6, if you're keeping score at home. Um, really quick tip, um, make sure you have a cartridge on your head shell when you play your records. Because uh, if you don't, you're, you're going to damage your records because it's just going to be the metal plate scratching on the vinyl um, and it won't play. Uh, maybe if one of these little... Um, metal tips for the wires maybe if they catch a groove you might hear some music but make sure you have a cartridge placed on your head shell that's a very important tip from Naz Nomad always have a cartridge on your on your head shell your records won't play Anyways, um, that's it. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching my videos. Thank you to people who are subscribing and who watched the whole entire videos. 
I really appreciate it. I'm sorry if this one was a bit rushed. It was, I have, I, I have exactly almost a half hour time to do a video and this is exactly what's taken here. Today's a half hour because um, today's my day off and I got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of chores to do today. So, um, and before my wife gets home and finds out I didn't cut the, I didn't cut the grass, I have to get going soon. Um, so yeah, I do have a life outside of vinyl. I swear to you, I do. It's not much of a life, but I, I have a, a, just a modicum of, of a life going on here. So anyways, um, sorry if, that, if the video was sounded a bit rushed. I just wanted to, um, uh, I have a bit of time today before the week, the work week starts and I wanted to make sure that I, uh, I got at least something filmed for you all and, uh, and I wanted to say thank you again. So, uh, once again, once again to Rick Ocasek, to everyone, to all the Cars fans out there. And I know there's millions of you out there. And I wish, I, I wish millions of you watch my videos, but I'm happy with what I got. Uh, cheers once again. Uh, I, 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 feel, I feel for anyone who kind of feels my sense of loss. So cheers, everyone. All right. That's it. This has been David Michael, a.k.a. Naz Nomad. Follow me on Instagram. At Naz Nomad, that's two Zs by the way, uh, underscore Nomad. Um, I appreciate if you would follow me there. Uh, that's where I do most of my social media kind of stuff now. Uh, I don't really post a lot on Facebook anymore. So if you contact me on Facebook, um, which is fine. I just don't post stuff hardly any, ever. I'm on to Instagram. Come on. Keeping up with the kids. You know what? In 10 years, I'll be on to Snapchat. Or Tinder if my wife leaves me. Anyways, and she will if I don't get the grass cut. So anyways, thank you very much, everyone. I will see you next time. Take care.